Howdy, I'm Karen from Karen Don Designs, and today I'm going to show you how to add a project to your Ravelry account. This is one part of a series of tutorial videos I'm doing on Ravelry, so if you'd like to get more of these videos, make sure you've subscribed to my channel so you don't miss out. The first thing you need to do is have a Ravelry account. Another video will show you how to do that if you have not set one up. And then you need to go to the My Notebook section and when you click on that, it will take you straight to your projects page. If you are in another section of your notebook, um, any of these types of sections, if you click up here at the top for projects, then you will be able to find this page. So on here, you will see that I have quite a few projects. Some of them have the, word, the letters WIP on top. That means it is a work in progress. And then those that do not have that are finished projects. And if you scroll down, I have quite a few projects. I've been on Ravelry for a number of years, and it just goes on and on and on until my very beginning projects are at the end. Um, I won't scroll down quite that far, but it's a nice visual record of all of the knitting projects that I've done. And that's one of the main things that you can get out of actually recording. Um, all of your projects in Ravelry. So to start, you need to go over here to this button that says Add Project. So click on that, and it will take you to the screen to start. First of all, you need to select which craft. Ravelry supports crochet, knitting, loom knitting, machine knitting, weaving, and spinning. So any of those types of projects can be added to Ravelry. My project is going to be a knitting project. Then you give your project a name. You can name your project whatever you would like. I generally like to name my project pretty much the same as the name of the pattern because that way I can find things very easily. Um, some people like to give their projects very creative names. So whatever you would like to do, go ahead and type in the name of your project. Um, the project that I'm adding is a pattern called Exploding Tardis. So I am going to call this Exploding Tardis. Like I said, not very creative with the pattern project name. Then you go down to this selection, and this is where you can link it to a pattern if you are using a pattern. If you are improvising something, or um, if you are a designer and you are putting in a project before the design is listed on Ravelry, then you can say, I didn't use a pattern. And sometimes, especially if you have a vintage pattern, there is a pattern that is not in the Ravelry database and you can select that button. For this project, I know that the pattern is in the Ravelry database and so I'm going to select, I used a pattern. And then here, I'm going to enter the pattern name. So you can get this from your actual pattern or uh, you can search patterns in the Ravelry library to find your name. And I will show you how to search for patterns in another tutorial video. So I've typed the pattern name and I click continue. Okay, so the next screen is going to give you a list of potential patterns that meet with the name that you entered. So if there were uh, multiple patterns named very similarly, um, some pattern names are very, very popular and there will be you know, a, dozen project, or a dozen patterns with that name, then you'll see a list of patterns here. For this one, there is only one project that is called Exploding Tardis. And indeed, this is the pattern that I'm going to be using, the Exploding Tardis from Lori B. Knitting. And so I am going to click choose this pattern. If you come to this screen and you can't find the pattern that you are looking for, you should do two things. You should, first of all, do a pattern search. Again, I'll show you how to do that in another tutorial video to see if you somehow typed the name of the pattern wrong or um, need to find it in some other way. Then if you've done that and Ravelry truly does not have the pattern then you can click this option, which I will click just briefly. Um, you can continue without linking one and it will take you here and the pattern name will, be, um, will not be linked. But I'm going to go back because I know that I do have this pattern and this is the one I'm using. So I'm going to choose this pattern. 
And when I click that, it takes me to now the database entry for my project. So here it's going to actually have linked the pattern name Exploding Pardis by Lori B Designs. And I have some more blanks to fill in. So the first thing that you want to do is fill in as many of the blanks as you want. Um, made for you, if this is a gift, just this is kind of to help you. Um, this is something you can leave blank if you'd like. If it's a gift and you want to actually name um, who you're making it for, you can do that. Um, sometimes if you're doing a test knit uh, for a designer, you can put the designer name here. And this one I am making for myself, so I'm putting made for me. Again, you can leave this blank. It is an optional um, space to fill in. If you want to link this to a specific Raveler, let's say you're making a gift for somebody and that person is on Ravelry, or you're doing that test knit for a designer, you can link to a Raveler. So I know, pretty sure, um, yes. So when you type in um, somebody's name, it will pull up any people that um, are on Ravelry that have that as their username. This is the designer, Lori B. So if I wanted to, I could link this to her. Um, for um, There's no real reason to do this um, in general, so I'm not actually going to link to her, but that is how you do that if you would like to do that option. For different um, projects, there will be different sizes available, especially if you're doing a garment. Go ahead and fill in the size that you made for, um, for your project. This is very helpful when people are searching projects on Ravelry to see, for example, um, how projects turn out or how much yarn is used for a particular size. So this not only helps yourself, but it also helps other people um, who are searching the database. And I will talk more about why, um, why it's important to think of Ravelry as a database and, and being useful to other people who are searching in a different um, video. So fill in the size made. I believe this one has only one size, so I'm going to leave this blank. Pattern name, since I already linked up my pattern, it should be linked. If I wanna double check that, I can click this little um, chain link button right here and that will show me yes indeed exploding TARDIS by Lori Beardsley that is the, the pattern so if I click it again it will keep the link if um, again your pattern is not listed in Ravelry you can click none of the above so I know this is the right pattern so I'm going to keep that linked and let's say you're doing some type of modification. You're doing um, maybe an Afghan blocks and you've got a lot of different um, patterns that you're per perhaps using to put your project together. If you click additional patterns, it will, um, and then click okay, it will open up another um, link for you to add additional patterns there. So something to keep in mind if you are kind of combining patterns. Down here, even though we've already chosen the knitting craft, if you need to make a change, you can always go here and make that change. Then tags. This is something that is useful both for yourself and again, also useful in the larger overall database. Um, I'll be honest that I usually don't use tags very often, but um, if you want to use tags or if you're taking part in a knit along that asks you to include a tag, then you should go ahead and add that here. Tags only work um, on Ravelry as one word. So if you have a tag that's multiple words, you need to type it in with no spaces. For example, if I wanted to actually write exploding TARDIS as my tag, if I do exploding space TARDIS, and then I click this add tags to your project button right here, notice it will actually um, well, actually, it'll pull up this box with some suggested tags. I'm going to ignore that for just a minute, and I'm going to say use this, these tags. And when I have my um, project page, it's going to show these as two separate tags. So what you need to do is have no space in between, so the exploding TARDIS. And I'll go ahead and leave that tag. I also um, am going to use this as a knit along. I have a podcast called T-Shirts and Shawls, and I have quarterly knit-alongs. 
So the tag for that is T-shirts and shawls, K-A-L, for knit a long. And then I put a space because, again, spaces is what separates the tags. And I'm just going to do shawl. Even though it's going to be listed as a shawl as a category, I'm just going to go ahead and use that tag. Um, again, completely optional for tags, um, but if you want to add some, that's how you do it. And then if you click the add tags, you can see some suggested tags. So for example, this is an asymmetric um, shawl, so I might want to use that tag. It's a shawl that uses short rows, so yes, that is true. I might want to use that tag. Again, it is optional, whatever you want to do. So let's say I do want the asymmetric tag. If I just click this button, it will automatically add asymmetric up here to my list of tags. When you have finished adding tags to your list, just say use these tags and it will add those to your project. The next thing to do is add your needles. And I forgot to see which size needles this pattern calls for, so I'm going to take a guess in here. Um, but basically when you pull this drop down box down, you'll see all the different sizes of needles. They're listed in the US sizes as well as the millimeter size. So whichever um, one you're most comfortable with. I'm going to guess that this pattern uses around a size four. So that's what I'm going to use for this example. So I'm going to select US 4, 3.5 millimeter. If this is a project that uses multiple needle sizes, then you just need to click add needle and it will give you another box. And let's say it also uses a size five. So I can do that. If I decide, you know what, that's wrong. I really only need the size four. I can go back to the drop down box and the very top is a blank. And so you can hit that blank and it will remove that second needle size. The next thing you can do is fill in your gauge. Um, I, and this can be your personal gauge that you got, um, or it can be the gauge from the pattern. Um, so it's your choice what you want to do. If you do a gauge swatch, I think this is a really nice record of checking to see what your gauge was. Um, I have not actually started this project yet, so I'm not going to fill in my own gauge swatch. Um, but just for the sake of showing you how, it's, how to do it, let's say I did do a gauge swatch and I found that I had 24 stitches and 32 rows. I did that for four inches and my pattern was stockinette. So um, that was my gauge for this project. If you, again, if you don't want to put your own gauge, you can fill in the gauge from the pattern. And if you click that, which I will do now, you'll see that it is 20 stitches over 28 rows and four inches of the body pattern. So um, you might want to fill in the gauge from the pattern just so you can have that on record that you can easily find it. So again, you can either put in your own gauge or you can fill in the gauge from the pattern. I'll go ahead and leave the pattern gauge here. The next step is to add your yarn. You can do this in one of two ways. If you have included your yarn in your stash, which I will show you how to do on a tutor another tutorial video, you can click use stash yarn. If you do not have the yarn already added to your stash, you can click add yarn. A little note here, clicking add yarn is not going to add the yarn to your stash. If you want to list the yarn in your stash, you need to do that first and then come back here and say use stash yarn. So I'm going to show you both ways. If you click add yarn, then it will open up this box where you can actually type the name of the yarn. So um, this is not the yarn I'm going to use for the project. Um, I'll show you that with the other example. So let's say I'm going to use Malabrigo sock yarn. So I'm going to type in Malabrigo sock and then I click this little chain button and it's going to tell take me to possible listings and here Malabrigo yarn sock. Yes, that is what I want to use. So I'm going to click on the link for sock. If you're not finding your yarn, then you click none of the above. But I'm going to use sock and you see how it popped up this box right here for about this yarn. So it gives you the information. The colorway um, it will have a list of colorways that people have added so far, or if you don't find yours on the list, you can add your own. Um, I'm going to pick um, uh, Arco Iris, and I believe that is a purple. Um, I don't know for sure, 
So I am going to um, pretend that it's purple. And you can go over here and select the closest color and say purple. If you have a dye lot, you can type that in. It will automatically have filled in how many yards and grams per stain. If you um, prefer, you can use meters and ounces or a combination um, that you prefer. Um, we're just going to say one skein. You, if you use more than one skein or um, like 1.5 skeins, you can add that in and it will automatically calculate based upon this per skein um, number. It will tell you how much you use. So let's say I did use 1.5. See how it changed those um, calculations right there. Then you can add where you got the yarn, when you bought the yarn, and how much you paid for it. So this is actually what you would be doing when you're adding yarn to your stash. Um, so this kind of gives you a way of doing that on the project. But again, it's not going to list the yarn in your stash. Um, this, is, this will be just on this project. So if you want the yarn in your stash, go to the stash section instead of doing it this way. So let's say I purchased it at my um, local yarn shop who doesn't carry Malabrigo, but we'll just pretend. Um, so the Knitting Fairy. And then I select this link and it gives me a couple of options. This one, the Knitting Fairy in Grand Prairie is the one that I want. So I select that. And then the purchase date, if I click this calendar, it will give me a list of the dates. You can go back to many years. Um, you can go to specific months. So let's say I, I bought it in July um, and let's say I bought it July 14th. If you don't remember the exact day but you know you bought it in July, you can click down here. I don't know the exact day and it'll just list July 2016. But I'm just going to pick July 14th, 2016. And the total paid for it. Um, so you can go ahead and type in a dollar amount for how much for how much you paid for the yarn. And if you use anything besides US dollars, you can choose in the drop down box um, for what you're using. Then if you are using more than one color or more than one yarn in the project, you can copy and add another colorway. So that will add another Malabrigo sock yarn, but you can type in a different colorway. So that's what you can do if you need to actually add your yarn from scratch. I'm going to cross this out because I'm not adding my yarn from scratch. So I'm just going to delete that and remove that yarn. Okay, so instead for this project, I'm going to be using stash yarn. So I've already listed the yarn in my stash. So I click use stash yarn. And this is going to give me a list of all the yarn that I have in my stash. Now you can go ahead and go through and scroll to find what you have. I have multiple pages, so it might take me a little while to scroll. Or you can stay up here in the search box and search for yarn. So I know that I'm going to be using Lazy Cat Elemental for this project. So I'm going to type that in and click search. And now it will give me just the yarns that are Lazy Cat Elemental, so much easier to find. So I am going to be using this police box color. So I go over here to this button and click use. Now this is a two color pattern. So I do need to have a second color of yarn in here. So if you notice, it's already added the, um, the yarn right here. So Lazy Cat Elemental Police Box. This tells me where I purchased it and it tells me a little bit about the yarn. Um, and then I can add how many skeins. So it's going to be one skein. Then, since I need to add the second colorway, I'm going to go back to use stash yarn and do the same thing. I'm going to search for Lazy Cat Elemental because I want to use the second colorway of Zonkers. And so I click use, and now it has added the second colorway. So again, there's police box up there, Zonkers down here and I'm going to be using one skein. So these are the two yarns that I'm going to use in this project. So I can go ahead and go down to the next section. This is the notes section. You can do multiple things in the notes. This is where I like to kind of keep a running list of what I'm doing. Um, right now, I'm just gonna type that I'm using this project as an example for a 
tutorial video. There we go. But before you click Save Changes, this is something you should do. Go back up to the top real fast and look at the section over here on the right. The status of your project, you can do In Progress, Finished, Hibernating, or Frogged. Since you're adding the project, most likely it is something that is in progress. But if you're adding a project after you finished it, you can go ahead and click Finished here. Mine is in progress. These are little smiley faces that indicate your happiness with the project. Um, honestly, I don't use them very much, um, but if you would like to use those, you can click one of them. I'm not going to click because um, once you click, you can't unclick one of the smiley faces. So I'm not going to actually click, but you can click on one and it will um, highlight that one in color. So you'll see that you used it. This is your progress bar, so you can show a percentage of the progress that you have. Let's say I, I, I haven't actually, but let's say I've started this and I've done what I consider about 15% of the project. So I just make sure my bar goes to 15%, click my mouse button, and it will save that 15%. These are for your started and completed dates of your project. So you just click on the calendar. And just like uh, before, you, uh, when I showed you when you bought the yarn, um, this shows you when you started the project. Since this is a project that I'm planning to cast on today, I'm going to choose today as my starting date. And the, um, the today date will have that little star on it so you can quickly find what is today. I'm going to leave completed blank for now because I haven't completed the project. Then what you can do, if you would like, if you're involved in groups and you want to share your project with a group, in this drop-down box you can go through and it will list all the groups that you're a member of and you can decide <clears throat> to share this project with that group. Right now I'm not going to share with a group, um, but I will show you just really quickly what that would look like. So let's say I'm going to share this in DFW Fiber Fest. I bought one of the yarns at DFW Fiber Fest, so it would make um, sense to share it in that group. So I'm going to select that group, and it will pop up as on this list of groups that I've shared this project with. And in another tutorial video, I'll show you exactly what this does when you share a project with a group. Um, but that's how you select them. And if you decide you no longer want to share this project with the group, you just go to this X right here, and remove it from the post. Um, and now we've filled in as much as we need to right now, and we can go down here and click Save Changes. So I'm going to do that now and then show you what your project page looks like. Okay, so here is my project page. Here are the tags that I had done. So you can see um, each tag is its own separate Thing, and I will show you how to use tags in another video. It is connected to the pattern and it tells me that the pattern is in my library which is a nice link that will take me directly there if I click on it. It also has my yarn and over here it gives me about this yarn and about this pattern so I can quickly um, click on these links and look and see oh this pattern's been made 13 other times. Um, and this yarn has been used in 52 other projects, so I can look at those. And again, that's something I'll show you how to do in another tutorial video. Here from this page, you can um, make a couple of changes. You can update your progress bar without having to actually go into the edit screen. So let's say I've made a little bit more progress and now I'm at 35%. So I click with my mouse and it will save that 35%. I can also come down here to the notes section and instead of editing the entire um, entry, I can click on this button right here and add a note. The nice thing about this is that when you add a note, it will automatically add in the date. So that way, if you want to keep a chronological um, record of your notes, you can go ahead and have the date in here. And if you need, it'll automatically put it today's date in. If you need to put a different date, let's say I actually, um, Actually, this is your heading style, your date style. I like it to have the, the month written out and the day and the year. But if you like it um, somewhere else, you can do that. Or if you need to make the change, you can actually come in and type. Let's say I'm putting a note about tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to, to actually type September 7th in there. And then I can just say this is an updated note. And you, know, you can type whatever you want in there. 
and then I'm going to say add this note. And now you can see here is the original note that I had written when I started the project. And here is my updated note with the date that I put um, on there um, so that I can see um, a clear separation. So let's say now I have another update. So let's say it's September 9th now. And I want to say something else about my progress on the, the pattern. Then I just type that in, add this note, and you can see it's going to put it in chronological order so you can keep that nice record of your notes for your project. So there's one more major thing that we need to do, and that is to add a photo. So what you do is after you have started your project, you go ahead to this screen and click on Add Photos. Once you do that, you are brought to the photo screen. And there are multiple options that you can use for adding photos. And I will do a separate tutorial video on each of these options. Um, because I think that this is something that, um, that, that kind of deserves its own separate tutorial. So for this option, um, I'm going to show you how to upload from a computer. So when you choose your files, um, you go down here to, so you click upload from computer and choose files. And then you need to go through and pick which, um, which picture you want to use. Um, I'm not going to go searching for, for pictures for this. I'm just going to grab um, a photo that I took um, that has nothing to do with this pattern, but just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to use this. So you double click on that. So let me show you again. You choose files. You actually go in your computer and try to, to figure out exactly where your picture is. Once you find it, you can double click it or you can click, um, click on it. So there's a check mark and click open whichever way you want to, um, to do to pick your photo. And then you click Upload. I'm going to do that. And Ravelry is going to upload it. Um, the photos are shown in a square box. So if you have a, a good square photo, that's, um, that works best. Or if your photo is not square, right here, you can drag, click and drag your mouse and you can move the photo in the box around. So if you need to um, kind of reposition it, you can do that. Notice that it automatically put my username, so I am Karen Dawn, as the copyright of this photo. This is something that I really want to stress. Please only upload photos that you have taken or that you have the copyright to. Do not upload a photo that you have taken from the internet that you do not own. Do not upload the um, pattern photo from the designer. Do not upload the yarn photo from the yarn dyer or from the yarn store that you bought it from. Only use pictures that you own because it is completely wrong to use someone else's picture and to have your name as the copyright. So um, just a, a, little, a little aside, I know people don't like to leave their um, pattern pages blank and they, they're not sure how to add their own photos and so they will use someone else's photo. Please do not do that. That is actually against copyright. So only use photos you actually own. Okay, so I've added a photo. You can add as many photos as you want. Um, just for the sake of showing you how to do this, I'm going to add another couple of photos to show you how to rearrange these. Um, so let's say I've got this one and this one. I'm going to upload these. Give it a minute to upload. Okay, so now I have multiple photos. And let's say I actually really want this orange one to be the first photo. And so I hover my mouse over this. I click and keep my mouse button held down and drag this photo until it is in the place that I want. So I want it to be the first and now I lift up on my mouse button and it has changed the order of the pictures. So you can do that with any of the pictures. Once you have all the photos uploaded that you want and you have them in the order that you want, you're done. You can go back up here to details and you can see that I have these pictures here now as part of my project. There are other things that you can do with projects, um, but, uh, but that's the main thing. 
if you need to come in and edit your project, you can always go up to here where it says edit project and it will open up that same um, panel that you did when you started the project. So you can go in and let's say you decided, you know, I originally wanted to make this for me, but now I'm going to make it for a gift. Um, so I can say gift for, um, I will just put in somebody's name, um, gift for Sally. Let's say I've, I've made that change. Um, you can come in here if you want to actually update your notes section without doing that other um, option. You can go in and update your notes here. Let's say you only used a partial skein of yarn um, once you've kind of finished your, your project. So you used um, 80 grams, so 0.8 skeins. Um, and I will talk about um, figuring out how much yarn you use in a project in a, a different tutorial video. Um, but, uh, but let's say you want to make that change. And let's say now we've finished this project. So I go up here to status and say finished. My progress bar should now be at 100%. And now I have my completed date of, let's say, September 10th. Ah, I just really whipped through this project and finished it in four days. That is not possible. Um, but uh, let's pretend that, that I did. So I have my completed date. And then when I click down here at the bottom on saved changes, it will go through and, um, and add this to my finished section. So it'll fill in those details. And if I go back to my project page, you will see that there is the project. And it, because I had a finished date, it no longer has that WIP work in progress. Um, it now has the finished project on here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this project from my pattern page since it is just an example project. So since I am going to do that, I can show you how. If for some reason you really feel like you need to delete a project on your page, you can go here to this down arrow and you can actually pick edit the project here. You can change or add photos here. Um, you can check the comments or the option I'm going to choose is delete this project. Um, so I'm going to say delete and click OK. And that project is going to go away. Um, so I hope that you found this video tutorial helpful. Um, I know that was a lot of information that was packed into one video. I'm going to unpack a lot of the different um, sections of it, especially the how to add pictures. So again, make sure that you have subscribed to my channel um, for Karen Dawn Designs tutorial videos so you don't miss any of these future videos for how to get started and how to work with Ravelry. I hope you have a wonderful day and happy knitting.